Hey guys, would it uh, be possible if we did a colorless goblin noise? Shut up, Jerry. Hey gang, just to let you know, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at flipsidegaming.com and originalmagicart.store. Using the code gets you 10% off orders $10 or more, and you get to help out the channel at the same time. I also want to let you know that Flipside Gaming will be giving away a box of War of the Sparks. From April 1st through May 6th, any order that's over $10 or more will get you entered to win. One entry per person, so good luck and have fun. Welcome back, my lovely viewers. Today's game was filmed at Platinum Star Games in Howell, New Jersey. I feel I should also mention that I no longer live in New Jersey and now currently reside in Ottawa. We've got Dean, who's going to be referred to as Dean J for the game, returning with his Michiko deck, and he keeps a Mesa Enchantress, Nevermore, Heliod God of the Sun, Cage Sun, Soul Ring, Plains, and a Mary of the Sky Ruin. I have borrowed Joe's Tuvasa deck, and I keep a Simic Growth Chamber, a Ghostly Prison, Imbolus's Clutches, Fortified Village, Two Forests, and a Verderan Enchantress. Dom seems to like to play a bunch of the same creature in his deck, and he's playing Maronar, keeping a Thornbite Staff, a Soul Ring, two Swamps, two Rack Colonies, and Hero's Downfall. Lastly, we have one of the store owners, Dean, playing his Miri Weatherlight Duelist, and he keeps a Plains, three Forests, March of the Multitudes, Vivian Reed, and Oath of Gideon. Dean wins the die roll and starts us off. Dean plays a Plains and passes. I play a Fortified Village, and I pass to Dean J. Dean J plays a Plains, and he casts a Soul Ring. Dom, not wanting to be shown up, plays a Swamp, casts his own Soul Ring, and then drops a Thornbite Staff. Dean plays a Forest, and he passes. I play a Forest, and also pass. Dean J plays an Ameria of the Sky Ruin, which comes in tapped, and he casts Rest in Peace, passing. Dom plays a Swamp, and he drops his first Rat Colony, followed quickly by a second. Dean plays a Forest, and he casts an Aura Shards, which seems great against my deck. I play a Forest, and I bring out the Verderan Enchantress. Dean J plays a Pearl Medallion, and then taps out to cast his Mesa Enchantress like a copycat, and passes. Dom draws, and plays two more Rat Colonies. He moves to combat, and hits Dean for 10. Dean plays a Bountiful Promenade as his land for turn, and it comes in untapped, and he casts an Oath of Gideon. He makes two core allies, and he blows up the Thornbite Staff and the Pearl Medallion, which are both exiled. I haven't drawn a land yet, so I cast a Ghostly Prison, drawing from my Enchantress trigger. I do manage to find a Crocent Verge, playing it tapped, and I pass to Dean J. Dean J plays a Karoo, bouncing an untapped planes back to his hand. He then passes. Dom plays another Swamp, and he casts Maronar. He then moves to combat, and it's kind of scary how he's got 20 power on the board with just a few rats. He sends 10 at each Dean, and both of them just take it. Dean plays a forest, and he casts Vivian Reed in his main phase. He upticks her, and he reveals a Selesnya Evangel, and he passes. I draw for turn, and I crack the verge. I grab a prairie stream, and a canopy vista as my plains and forest respectively. I then play a tap Simic Growth Chamber, returning a land to my hand, and I pass. Dean J plays a Plains, and Pain 4 casts Michiko to help dissuade Dom from attacking him. Would you mess with someone who brings his own fan to the table? Dom casts a Rat Colony to the surprise of literally no one. He uses a Hero's Downfall to remove Michiko from the equation, and he swings everything at Dean J. Dean J clears no blocks, and before moving to damage, Dom taps Maronar, sacrificing his new colony to make 5 rat tokens and puts them into play. As a result, this is more than enough damage to take Dean J out, and he dies. Dean plays a forest, and he drops his Evangel. He decides not to use the Orishard trigger despite having to target my ghostly prison, and he follows up with an Oblivion Ring, and he exiles Maronar. 
Dean then upticks Vivian Reed, and he keeps Tristani Discordant from her plus one ability. I draw, and I play a forest. I then pay four to cast Eidolon of Blossoms, drawing from the Enchantress and from the Eidolon as it enters. I then follow up with a Psychic Corrosion, and we make a slight misplay thinking that the Enchantress trigger is an ETB and not a cast. As a result, Dom and Dean mill four as opposed to the two. I then discard down to seven, and I pass to Dom. Dom draws, and he casts Phyrexian Reclamation. He drops another rat colony, and he moves to combat. Dom swings his rat tokens at Vivian, and Dean lets the walker take the hit. Removing five loyalty counters, and with nothing else, Dom passes. Dean upticks Vivian after drawing for turn, and reveals a forest that he'll keep. He then plays the forest, and he brings out Miri in his main phase. With her entering, Dean blows up Dom's soul ring, and with nothing else, he passes to me. I play a Sun Petal Grove, and the coat of arms in Dom's graveyard makes the open the vaults in my hand seem less than ideal. I instead cast a Dawn's Reflection on my Simic Growth Chamber, drawing two and milling my opponents for four. I then cast a Herald of the Pantheon, and it hits the field, and I realize I probably should have cast the Seder first, but oh well. Dom draws and plays a Swamp. He casts another rat colony, but thankfully his swarm of rats are being held at bay by Miri, which is kind of cute if you think about it in the cat versus rat kind of way. With the spell in the stack, Dean taps his Evangel and Miri to make a token. Dom can still attack me because Miri's ability only protects Dean, but the ghostly prison will make it cost more than Dom really has. Dean puts the sapperling token onto the field, and I realize I've spoken too soon as he uses his aura shards trigger to blow up the ghostly prison. Moving to combat, Dom swings one rat colony at Dean, and three rat colonies at me. I declare no blockers, while Dean blocks with one of his core allies. Before moving to damage, he taps his tokens and remaining lands to cast a March of the Multitudes, gaining three soldier tokens with lifelink. He blows up the Phyrexian Reclamation, which Dom activates in response to get back a rat colony, my psychic corrosion, and Dean's own Oblivion Ring. I then take the hit and drop to four, and Dom passes turn. Dean untaps and draws for turn. He upticks Vivian again and reveals a Kazandu Tusk Collar for her ability. Dean then plays a forest, and we see a Tristani Discordant gaining him more soldiers as she enters. Moving to combat, he swings Miri and the tokens who are able to attack at Dom. Dom blocks Miri with one of his rats, and he takes eight with Dean gaining four from his lifelinking soldiers. I play a tapped Path of Ancestry, and I cast Enchantress's Presence, drawing on cast and as it enters, and gaining one life from the Herald. I then tap only my Simic Growth Chamber, I cast a Retether, and I bring back Angelic Destiny, attaching it to my Eidolon. I draw from the Eidolon, and think about attacking until I realize it doesn't have Vigilance, so I pass turn. Dom casts two more Rat Colonies, and swings one at each of us. I block with the Eidolon, while Dean blocks with the Soldier token and gains two life. Dean once again activates Vivian, and reveals a Plains, putting it to hand. He plays it as his land for turn, and he heads to combat. He swings everything he has at Dom, who blocks once more the Rat token on Miri. He then takes 12, while Dean gains 8. Dean then casts a Soul Ring, and then the Kazandu Tuskcaller, who upon entering, blows up my Enchantress's presence with the Ore Shard's trigger. I play a Plains, and use Inbolus's clutches to steal Ore Shards. Dom asks why I don't grab Miri, but I'm more concerned with the Shards blowing up my board at this point. I draw two cards, and gain one life from doing so. I then cast Unquestionable Authority, which gets stuck onto the Eidolon, and I draw three cards this time, gaining one more life. It seems like no matter what I do at this point though, I'll die to whoever's left over from the swing back, and I cast a Sram who comes in, blowing up Dean's Oath of Gideon before passing. Dom draws, and plays a non-rat colony card this turn in the form of a pack rat. He then swings one of the colonies at Dean, who before moving to blockers, makes another sapling token with the Evangel, and blocks with it. Dean draws, and heads to combat. He swings Miri and the three soldiers at Dom, and the Saprilene and Core at me. 
Dom blocks Miri with his huge pack rat and takes six, while I block one token and take two. In his second main phase, Dean recasts Miri and then upticks Vivian. He reveals a survivor's encampment and puts it to hand. Dean then casts a Lanowar Elves and he passes. I play a tapped Razor Verge Thicket and I cast a Rancor onto the Eidolon, drawing three cards and gaining one life. I then get to cast Octopus Umbra, gaining one more life and drawing three more. Shield of the Oversoul then graces the battlefield on the Eidolon, giving me one more life and drawing me three more cards. I also get to cast my new favorite enchantment, Estrid's Invocation, and have it become a copy of the Angelic Destiny, giving me another life and drawing me three more cards as I enchant the Eidolon again. At this point, I've drawn a bunch of lands and zero board wipes, and I decide to count up how big the Eidolon is. It's about 20 power with flying, indestructible, first strike, and trample, but I need lifelink. I'm happy to cast an armadillo cloak onto the Eidolon, drawing three more cards, and gaining another life. Moving to combat, I swing the Eidolon at Dean, but he has a Crosen Grip ready to take out my armadillo cloak. The silver lining is I get to tap Miri though, and Dean still takes 20 damage, but I gain no life. I then pass to Dom. Dom draws, and taps two rats and four lands to cast an obelisk of Erd, naming rats as it enters. He swings two of his colonies at me, and one at Dean. I block with Sram and the Herald because I'll die otherwise, and Dean uses his Evangel as he's been doing for the last several turns to make a chump token and blocks with it, and with nothing else, Dom passes. Dean draws, and up takes Vivian, revealing a copy of Ovia Pashiri, Sage Lifecrafter, and he puts her to hand. He places Survivor's Encampment as a land for turn, and heads to combat. He swings Miri and everything else at me for a change of pace, and being only able to block one, I stop Miri with the Enchantress, and then die to the tokens, with Dean gaining eight. Dean then levels up the Tusk Collar twice, and he casts Ovia, who blows up the Obelisk upon entering thanks to the Aura Shards. Dom draws, and plays a Swamp. He discards a card to Pack Rat to make a token, and swings at Dean. Dean blocks with one token, and knowing he's dead on the swing back, Dom scoops it up. Game review time. So, as awful as it was for Dean J to be the first person to be taken out, I think it was probably the right move on Dom's part to do so. Everyone else was playing a very combat-centric deck, whereas Dean J seemed to be playing more of a mono-white control build. He was probably the most likely to have an impact on people swinging, and also be running the most board wipes. Unfortunately though, Dom's go wide strategy kind of faltered against Miri. I'd never seen a Miri deck before, so it was interesting to see how she affected the battlefield. I didn't realize how strong her abilities were for attacking and blocking, and I'm glad I got to see a good build of it in action. Joe's Tuvasa deck often has me wondering about my Zedru deck, and whether or not red or green is the superior enchantress color. I know green offers you a lot more draw and protection, but red finds me tutors and lots of fun spells like Sunbird's Invocation, so it's a hard toss-up in the air. I also find that Tuvasa tends to be built more around a Voltron style, whereas I've got my Zedru deck more as a control enchantment based deck. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.